All right, stay tuned, because I'm gonna show you how I made this delicious vegetable lasagna with no pasta. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today, we are gonna be making a delicious vegetable lasagna, but we're not using any pasta. Instead, we're gonna use eggplant, summer squash, and zucchini as our noodles. We're gonna slice them real thin on the mandolin. We're gonna grill them off on the big green egg so we can extract some moisture and get some additional flavor to the veggies. If you were to just slice these up and try to make a lasagna out of them, um, you can do it, but it, it'll end up being kind of a soupy mess. So we're gonna slice them all real thin, fairly thin, about a quarter of an inch or so. And we're gonna salt them to help pull some of that moisture out. And then we're gonna cook them on the, uh, on the grill. You can also cook them in the oven on a sheet pan with a wire rack. Just do it in batches, take your time. The eggplant we may not be able to slice on the mandolin, it's a little bit tough, so we'll, we'll use a regular knife for that. We're gonna make our own pasta sauce, San Marzano tomatoes, a little bit of red wine vinegar, some red onion, and some tomato paste. And we'll finish it with some fresh basil right at the end. When we layer the lasagna, I'll show you it all, but we're gonna add some additional things to it. Um, for our meat layer, we're gonna use just some shredded carrots that we bought from the store. Um, we're gonna cook them up in the cast iron skillet, put a little salt and pepper, olive oil on them. You wanna cook these down so they're pretty well wilted and, and done. Um, like I said, with these veggies, we're gonna try to get some moisture out of it. We're gonna try to get the moisture out of these too. So when we put it all together with the, with the pasta sauce, it'll absorb into those veggies and it won't be like a soupy mess when we try to make the lasagna. And instead of ricotta cheese, we're gonna be using goat cheese. And then we're gonna make like a goat cheese mixture for a couple of layers another layer of mozzarella and then some mozzarella on top. We're gonna to bake it off in the oven with wrapped in tin foil for an hour at 400 degrees. And then for the last half an hour, we'll take the tin foil off, add a little bit more cheese, some Parmesan Reggiano on the top, and it's gonna come out amazing. You just wait and see. The first thing we're gonna do is get the pasta sauce made. We'll show you that. Let's get the onion ready. Probably only need half of this onion. Not the ideal way to cut an onion, but it's just for the sauce. And part of that onion didn't look so good, so I'm just gonna take the good part of the onion.
All right, we are gonna be using the mandolin and the knife now. And if you're using the mandolin, you gotta be super careful. Wear some type of cut resistant glove. This one's um, not ideal, but my other cut glove is in my Jeep. So my Jeep's not here. So we're gonna use this. So it'll just keep my, if I do nick the glove, I keep from my uh, fingers getting nicked, so. Like I said, we're going to salt in between each layer, so that's what this is for. This is super easy to do with a mandolin. The first slice usually is a throwaway because it's kind of, you know, not the best for making. Basically, what we're doing is we're trying to make our own um, pasta sheet. So slicing it like that. Like I said, we'll salt them, each individual layer, and this will end up being a big stack of sliced veggies. This mandolin is not ideal for this, but my other one's a little bit dull, so if I can use this. Try this at home, folks. Like I said, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do the eggplant through that because it's the eggplant's kind of a little bit wider. If anybody knows of a better brand of mandolin, let me know because this one not ideal. As you can see, the layer in them. I'm going to salt each layer too to try to pull out that moisture. It's not going to be too salty in the end because most of that moisture will carry away the salt. You just want to get it on there so it helps take, you know, some of that moisture out of that vegetable, so you don't have a big soupy mess at the end. Like I said, first piece, no good. This is kind of a fun way to do it without pasta. Doesn't make it traditionally lasagna, but uh, when you put it all together, it's almost like a game to get everything, you know, matched up and, and kind of interwoven in, so it keeps its structure when you cook it. We've made this a bunch of times, and it's a favorite here, but it takes a long time to make, so probably only make it a couple times a year. Usually we don't peel this, but uh, the wife is requesting we try it without the skin on it this time, which I'm okay with because um, it can kind of get bitter. Plus it'll make it a little bit easier to slice, I'm sure. real thin like that, especially on this, you want to cut the thin part off just because it'll burn real quick when we uh, are doing it on the grill. Kind of looks like pasta. If 
don't have a mandolin, you can use a knife. Just make sure it's sharp. Just go down the side. Just try to keep them all the same thickness. It's a little harder to get them all the same thickness though. You see that one's a little bit thicker. And you can also lay it flat on your cutting board if you got a sharp knife. Might be a little easier for you. It's like that one. We'll do that because it'll burn if you don't. That thin part. That's going to turn into our pasta. So we're going to let it sit a little bit, um, let the salt do what it needs to do to get rid of some of the moisture. When we get done cooking this, you'll see there'll be a bunch of moisture in the bottom of this pan that you know you don't want in your pasta. So we will do a few more prep things. I've got to get the carrots cooked. Um, we're also going to cook up some Swiss chard, which I've got in the sink back here, which we've already rinsed. I'm gonna cut the veins out, chop them up real fine, cook those off first, and then add the um, leaves to the saucepan, cook that down, and it's gonna be another layer on the on the lasagna. It makes for a nice, nice meatless lasagna, but with some different textures on it instead of just you know eggplant, summer squash, and zucchini. So we'll get that going and check on our sauce. Our sauce is looking good. See all that garlic seasoning. We like our sauce a little bit chunky. We'll cook this down a little bit more. cooking our shredded carrots are cooking in the cast iron skillet put a cover on it so they cook a little bit quicker um, we're gonna fire roast off some peppers for one of the layers that should be really good these won't be too hot but should give it a nice flavor so we'll we'll char it real good put it in a bag and then uh, peel the skin off and then either slice it or I'll probably chop it up so it's a little bit easier to eat when you're when you're slicing into it so this is rainbow chard, Swiss chard. I've already got it washed. If I try to saute it with this rib in there, um, the leaves cook a lot quicker. So what I usually do is I'll take the rib out and get rid of that in. And kind of chop them up. And then I'll cook these down in the cast iron pan after the carrots are done and then once these are cooked I will throw the chopped up leaves on top and get them wilted down so they're kind of pre-cooked and get the moisture out of those also. You're gonna cook this, it is a labor of love. It's uh, quite a bit of a process to get all this stuff done and processed and, and pre-cooked. So 
It's not, like I said, there's your lasagna, there's not a soupy mess in the end. Could just cook the leaves down, leave out the stems, but there's uh, some fiber in there and also they taste pretty good in my opinion. on the sauce. I believe the sauce is done. I just let it cool down and the carrots are getting close. All right, so there's our stems we're going to cook up and we'll saute these down too once the stems are cooked. The carrots are almost done and the sauce is done so we are going to get the grill fired up and then once the carrots are done, I'll show you those. You almost want them to like caramelize a little bit, um, get cooked down, get as much moisture out of those as you can, but I'll bring you over there and show you those in just a second. This is kind of what you're looking for. I don't know if you can see that it's starting to caramelize. So you gotta keep stirring it. And get it cooked down. We probably got another 20 minutes or so to go. Sauce, that's done. the finished product the zucchini eggplant and summer squash you just want to basically cook it get the grill marks on it and try to take out most of the moisture it ends up being quite a bit like pasta so it should should come out really good like I said we've made this a bunch of times so I know it's gonna come out good all right we'll see you in the kitchen when we get everything assembled all right, we've got everything pretty much assembled. We made the sauce, sauteed down the carrots, take all the moisture out of them that you can. While I was grilling, my wife sauteed these down for me, the rainbow Swiss chard. And I'm not gonna open them yet. As you can see, it's kind of like pasta now. And you, basically, you're trying to take as much moisture out as you can. A little bit of grill flavor on there is actually amazing. You can do this in the oven. It would be a lot easier just to do it in batches. Um, but the little added grill flavor on there, it comes out really, really good. So I've already took the skin off of this one, but when you fire roast them, the skin comes off so easy. And so we're gonna get this prepared. We are gonna chop it up and use it for one of the layers. This recipe has kind of developed over time and in our household and my wife likes it a little bit spicy. I probably would leave these out, but they're not too spicy. Um, we've done it with Paul Guano's um, also. 
so. So mostly deseeded and no skin on there. So instead of ricotta cheese, we like to use goat cheese in ours. Adds a nice flavor. Um, some people aren't a fan of ricotta cheese, so this is a nice alternative. And we're gonna make kind of like a cheese mixture. So we're gonna get this out of here, get it crumbled up. And then we're gonna chop up this thyme and add a little bit of green chili flake also. Stuff's a little bit difficult to deal with um, goat cheese. So keep it cold so you can kind of crumble it up. If you let it get to room temperature, it kind of makes it a little bit more difficult to get out of the container. All right, new pair of gloves. So I just destemmed a bunch of thyme and a fine chop on it. goat cheese, thyme, and flat iron pepper company. It's like a jalapeno, hatch pepper, and haban green habanero in here. It adds some nice flavor without too, too much heat. And if you don't like thyme, you can always leave this, leave thyme out. But I think, uh, Makes a nice touch. Add a ton of that. That aside, I do need to shred some mozzarella. Um, you can buy the stuff in the bag, but go to the deli counter and get them to slice you off a chunk a good mozzarella, a little moisture mozzarella, or they sell it in blocks, usually right in front of the deli also. All right, got our mozzarella done. All right, so we're gonna attempt to get all this in these two pans. This one, we're gonna cook today. This one, I'm gonna try to get it. Hopefully I have enough. I'm gonna make a small one. We'll put that in the freezer. So for later on, you can um, thaw it, throw it in the oven, and, and have an easy meal one night. So we'll start with some sauce. A nice even layer on the bottom there. And I always start with the eggplant. So we're going to layer that down. Eggplant's kind of shaped weird, so you put one this way. Next one, you put that way. It's kind of like a big jigsaw puzzle to make this. And you'll have different size pieces that you can use to make a nice even layer. It's definitely like working with pasta. Kind of a neat idea, we thought. Just kind of pat them down as you go. I don't want any air bubbles or anything. You want just sauce touching everything. That's how that one looks. And next we'll do some zucchini. Try to go in different directions. So kind of interwoven in there. Holds together a little bit better when you go to slice it. That stuff smells so good already. You smell the grill, smell that sauce. All right, next layer, put some of our carrot down. Then we'll do the zucchini. Then we'll go back to eggplant. And alternate. This is kind of like our meat texture layer. It's pretty much cooked all the way through but it still has some good texture and adds a little sweetness to it. It's gonna be super good. If you're gonna make this it's a labor of love like I said it's quite the process but it's so worth it especially if you don't want to do carbs or low carbs. We're gonna have some bread with it later but Soak up all that juice that comes to the mix. Pat it down. 
that layer. So next, so we ran the zucchini this way, so now we're gonna run the summer squash opposite direction. After the summer squash, I think I'm gonna do the goat cheese layer. And some of them are gonna tear when you're grilling them, but just get them in there where they fit perfectly. And we cooked this down pretty good, as you can see. It's not real runny. You don't want a real runny sauce when you make this. Because there's still some moisture in the vegetables that's going to come out. That's why we're going to cook it covered for an hour, 375. And then we're going to cook it uncovered to help some of that moisture come off at the end. Once we uncover it, we will grate on some Parmesan Reggiano also. Let's get our cheese down. Kind of want to try to make an even layer with this also. And we're going to put the eggplant over the top of the uh, over the top of this. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just try to get a, get a nice layer down. It's going to melt anyway. If you're not a goat cheese fan, you can always do the ricotta or just do mozzarella or whatever cheese you like. A little mozzarella in there too. This will kind of help it stay together too because you don't have the pasta to, when you slice it to keep everything together. Eggplant. Swiss chard. I'm gonna put the chili in with this layer also. I'm running out of room for everything. I almost didn't think I was gonna be able to make a little side dish here, but since I got everything cooked and looked at it, I was like, I might need to do a little, little piece for later. So if you're gonna make this, make extra, because it does freeze well and it it takes a long time. It's uh, three o'clock now, we started this at 10. Summer squash. That's probably it for this one. Get it packed down and then I gotta have room for the cheese and a little bit more sauce on top. Have to go get the remainder of the sauce out of the pot. There's more than I thought. When you see this lasagna when it's done, when we slice it out of there, it's gonna be a pretty big thick piece, but it's all vegetables, so it's not terribly filling, but it's so good. You just gotta try to make it fit however you can. Perfect. All right, I ran out of cheese, so I'm gonna freeze this one like it is. Uh, best thing, wrap it in saran wrap, wrap it in tin foil, and we'll just stick it in the freezer. Take it out two days before, leave it in the refrigerator, and then uh, put some fresh mozzarella on top, tin foil, put it in the oven. This one probably 45 minutes at 375, and then take the uh, cover off in 20 to 30 minutes uncovered after you grate your Parmesan Reggiano on there. All right, so we're gonna get this on the sheet pan and get it in the oven. All right, now let's get it in the oven. All right, we'll see you back in one hour when we grate the cheese on top. Let's see how we did here. Looking good so far, starting to get bubbly. At this point, we want to get the Parmesan grated, put it on there, and put it back in the oven, probably about a half an hour, bump it up to 400 so the top gets nice and brown. If it doesn't get nice and brown in the half an hour, um, you can turn the broiler on for, for just a moment to, to get it you know, to the color that you want. Fresh grate some parm here. Who doesn't like a little extra cheese? All right, we're 
We'll get that back in the oven and check back when it's all nice and golden brown and bubbly. thinking so we get it's obviously got to cool way down before we can cut into it so for easy garlic bread we'll get some butter some garlic If you put this in the microwave on just regular heat, it can explode. The moisture in that butter can make it pop. So put it on defrost. All right, quick and easy garlic butter. Get it all the way to the edges. If you're trying to not do carbs, obviously skip the garlic bread. But since we uh, don't have any pasta in there, it's okay to cheat a little bit with a little bit of bread. I'm gonna make this a cheesy garlic bread. Let's get that in the oven, put it on broil, watch it really close. All right, now that it's out of the oven and rested, let's get a couple of slices out of here. Usually I like to do it the width of the spatula just so I have the ability to get it out. vegetables it's it's filling and satisfying but it's not like eating a bunch of pasta Let's see if I can get this out of here in one piece As you can see all those layers in there. Looks kind of like pasta. A little extra sauce we heated up. Never hurts. All right, 
right, let's see how we did. bit of smokiness from the grill those vegetables cook perfectly a little bit of sweetness from the carrot you taste that cheese that goat cheese is really good in there it's like a flavor bomb in your mouth really good mm. the veggies still have a little bit of bite to them really really good it's like goat cheese Top that with the garlic, garlic bread. Soak up a little bit of that. Mm. Really good. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Let me know if you do make this recipe. I'll try to include everything in the description. Thanks for tuning in. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. I really do appreciate you guys tuning in. Until next time, thank you.